So here's the thing. I like Spider-Woman, <laughs> Jessica Drew in particular, this one, and there's a problem that has been irking me ever since I discovered the character and ever since I have, you know, sort of fallen in love with her in terms of a character. She is constantly set up with Spider-Man in terms of Spider-Man related events or just people not knowing who she is being like, oh yeah, she's the female Spider-Man, blah, blah, blah. And honestly, that second part bothers me less. That's just people being uninformed. What bothers me the most is when, for example, she is lumped into an event called Spider-Verse or an event called Spider-Geddon, which is supposed to be an event that ties in all of the Spider-related characters that revolve around the original Spider-Man, alternate universe versions of Peter Parker or ones associated with him, like Cindy Moon, who was bitten by the same radioactive spider that bit Peter Parker. Jessica Drew has no relation to Spider-Man outside of a couple things. And before we get into those, I want to explain her origin for those of you who have no idea who Spider-Woman is. So there are two origins for Jessica Drew. They're pretty similar. One was told in her original book, Spider-Woman number one, where she's basically a little girl who gets infected by uranium poisoning and to save her, her father, who is a scientist, along with the help of the High Evolutionary, who's not the High Evolutionary yet, uses spider DNA, a special serum made out of uh, a Wundagore spider's DNA, and injects her with it and then sticks her in a genetic accelerator, which eventually saves her, and when she wakes up, many years later, she has spider powers, and then she goes on to become Spider-Woman. Her second origin, which was an updated origin at the time of it coming out, which is in a book aptly named Spider-Woman Origin, is now retconned, as far as I know. It's a retcon that was retcon, just because, you know, it sort of confused things, and I think the most recent in-canon history of Spider-Woman details her original origin, not the one told in Spider-Woman Origin. That one basically just changes things to her be having her spider powers given to her when she's in the womb and being indoctrinated into Hydra in a different way. Basically, big things that you need to know or take away from her origin is that she did not get her powers in any relation to Peter Parker. She's from England. Her powers were given to her on Mount Wundagore, and usually the High Evolutionary is involved as the person who is... It's the High Evolutionary and her father that most of the time give her her powers. Basically, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, not involved in any way. Not even in her becoming Spider-Woman and taking the name Spider-Woman. That is usually derived from her joining Hydra under false pretenses and after she's sent out on her first mission to assassinate Nick Fury, Nick Fury tells her, hey, look, Hydra are the bad guys. Here's the proof. Your boyfriend that you've been palling around with is actually a setup and he's just a bad dude. This is unimportant. Basically, Jessica Drew has no relation to Spider-Man in her origin, and she has little to no relation to Spider-Man in her actual canonical history in the comics. So let's talk about significant cases of Spider-Woman interacting with Spider-Man. So the first time Peter and Jess met was actually in Spider-Woman issue 20, and not much happened here. It was basically just Jess was recently fired from her job, and Peter went with the Daily Bugle to LA to check out for some assignment their job. I don't know, it's confusing. The point is, they hardly ever interact. Peter thinks that Spider-Woman is breaking into some safe, but she's not. There's some other semantics, and Jess is like, I'm not, I'm good, I'm Spider-Woman. And Peter goes away. And that's it. And um, he might show up more later in the series, but honestly, past that, their first meeting, nothing else happens until New Avengers, which is the time that Brian Michael Bendis decided, hey, Spider-Woman is cool, I made Jessica Jones, but I feel bad for shafting Jessica Drew to the side, so let's bring Jessica Drew back in the limelight and make her a New Avenger. At this time, she was a sort of triple agent working for S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hydra. She's not a scroll quite yet, we'll get to that. And when the big breakout of the Supermax supervillain prison that ends up being the catalyst for the new Avengers forming, she is the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent on on watch, basically, who's guiding Matt Murdock and Foggy Nelson around the prison to represent uh, the Sentry, who is, you know, sort of self... Uh, he, he, he put him 
he put himself there because they were like, I, he was like, I killed my wife. This is unimportant. Basically, when the breakout happens, Jess is there coincidentally at, working as a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and she is invited by Captain America to join the new Avengers. Now, after this happens, Jess around this time is depowered and she strikes a deal with Hydra who sort of come to her and say, we're going to kill you if you don't work for us. But in return for working for us, we will A, won't kill you, and B, we will give you your powers back. I'm going to suggest, and literally everyone except Bendis, and I guess Marvel's editorial, the team that was conducting the experiment to give Jess her powers back was run by Queen Veronki, the Skrull, who then went on to impersonate Jess up until Secret Invasion. So yeah, the point is, Spider-Man is also on that new Avengers team, if you didn't pick that up through osmosis yet and that is where the 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 big amount of their interactions come from in fact there's a line in new avengers where they mention the fact that they have similar names and they're just sort of joking about it like oh uh, i stole your name blah 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 or no peter's like or i think luke cage says hey did she steal your name or something spider-man's like yeah she did but spider-woman's like no you told me i could use it after that nothing really happens between the two I think Spider Island happens after this, where she just sort of shows up, similar to the next event that we're going to talk about, but she's not really inherently a part of Spider Island. She has a tie-in, uh, where I think she just tries to find a cure for all the Spider Island victims and fights off some bad spider people. Again, she's just thrown in here because Spider hyphen is the first part of her superhero name. Next up is Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse is where this really started becoming a problem because up until Spider-Verse, she was an Avenger. She was an Avengers character. She started off as a solo character, then was repopularized and looped into the Avengers and became an essential part of the Avengers mythos. Apparently, Marvel Editorial didn't remember this because when Spider-Verse came around, she just showed up as a recruit for the Spider Army that was fighting the Inheritors. And it was fine at the time, and honestly, I forgive it because it launched a Spider-Woman series. It launched Dennis Hopeless's Spider-Woman series that really made the character into what I love today. And I, I'm thankful for her being put into that event for that reason. But it can't be ignored that she had no reason for being there. The only reason she was there was, again, because Spider is in her name. You could argue that maybe them... Marvel shoehorning the fact that Anya Corazon, the current Spider-Girl, was Spider-Woman's protege, which was sort of just slapped in there last minute as far as I know. Uh, you could argue that she was there because Anya was there, but honestly, Anya also doesn't have a lot of connections to Peter Parker, so she was sort of also there just because her name is Spider. The biggest connection between Anya Corazon and Peter Parker is that they both started in a book called Amazing Fantasy. Amazing Fantasy Volume 2 was Anya's and Amazing Fantasy 15, and I think some of the following issues, but not a lot of them, was Peter Parker. After Spider-Verse, Jess basically says herself that she's tired of being an Avenger and she's tired of being involved in all this multiversal spider shit and decides that she's gonna sort of become a lesser superhero and get back to the PI life that she used to do. So she goes off and does that, and sort of disappears after Dennis Hopeless's run because it got canceled after she, after she had a baby and we really haven't seen her since. She hasn't been popping up in any books, maybe background in some, but other than that, we've got nothing until later this year when spider Genin comes out, which as of San Diego Comic-Con, which happened a couple weeks ago, she's showing up a lot, which is concerning for a couple reasons. One, her being just in the background of Spider-Geddon, I would have been fine with, especially if that spins her off into another series again, which would have been fantastic. But that's not what's happening. And take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt, because we don't know her reason for being there, but I would be willing to bet a lot of money that her reason for being there will not be anything more than she's a spider character, even though she's not. Uh, and that's, you know, backed up by... She's just there and no one's making a big deal out of it. 
and uh, Dan Slott's writing it again, who, Dan Slott's the same writer who wrote Spider-Verse, and that's how he introduced Jess to Spider-Verse, was she just sort of showed up, and everyone was like, oh, okay, cool. Spider-Woman's here because she's Spider-Woman. She should be here, right? The big thing that gets me about Spider-Geddon, though, is the fact that they are spinning Jess off into a new book, but it's not her own solo series. She's a part of a new team called Spider-Force, which involves two new spider characters, Kane, who's a clone of Peter Parker, so that makes sense, and Spider-Girl from Old Man Logan. And then Jessica Drew is just there. For no reason. It doesn't- I, like, I don't know the premise of Spider-Force. I, I don't know what the reason for it is going to be, but sort of the, the vibe that I'm getting from Spider-Force is the same vibe I was getting from the team that, uh, that, you know, the Spider-Verse team that was protecting the web of life. I don't remember what it was called. It might have just been called Spider-Verse, but Jess wasn't on that. That team had, like, uh, Spider-Gwen and I think one of the clones, some other spider characters, but why is Jess on this team? It doesn't make any sense. It just, it bothers me so much that Spider-Woman is just treated as something that she is not at all. She's not part of Peter Parker's mythos. She's not part of the Spider-Man mythos. There are plenty of other characters who are part of the Spider-Man mythos that would be way more accurately called Spider-Woman, not Jessica Drew. And here's where I'm gonna get in to a little bit of the naming solutions that I have. So first, we're gonna, we're gonna just take Spider-Woman away from Jessica Drew for a bit and see if we can give it to someone else. So off the top of my head, there are three characters that come t immediately to mind that would be perfect to have the name Spider-Woman. Now, the first one is a little bit debatable. I'm gonna throw Anya Corazon, the current Spider-Girl in there, who used to be called Aranya. And the reason that she's a bit debatable for taking the name Spider-Woman is because she does have a similar problem to Jess where she doesn't have too much relation to Peter. I mentioned this earlier. Um, she's sort of her own hero. And that's why I, I kind of like her being called Spider-Girl, uh, sort of just because, you know, Aranya is a better name. She should have just stuck with Aranya, but I think there's some story reason of everybody getting her, her name wrong, and she was just like, alright, I'm Spider-Girl now. But, like, Aranya is such a better name for the character because, um, she doesn't have much relation to the, the spider mythos, which, yeah, give her Aranya back, but if you have to put Spider-Woman on someone, she's an okay candidate. A better candidate would be Maddie Franklin, the third Spider-Woman, who she genuinely had the name Spider-Woman for a while. And get this, third time's the charm, when this Spider-Woman came around, she was actually tied into the Spider-Mythos. She's the niece of J. Jonah Jameson, and Norman Osborn was heavily involved in her origin. It's some weird chanting ritual uh, where she was like sacrificed but given powers or something. It doesn't matter. The point is, she was cemented in spider continuity from the beginning, unlike Jessica Drew and Julia Carpenter, the second Spider-Woman. Now, even more cemented in spider continuity and would make even more sense to have the name Spider-Woman is Cindy Moon, who's currently known as Silk. If you don't know who Silk is, she's a great character, I love her, and Silk is a great name for her, but she was bitten by the same exact spider that bit Peter Parker and gave him his powers. She has a slightly different power set because of her genes or whatever, but she's prime candidate number one to be called Spider-Woman. She has basically a familial relationship through the spider with Peter Parker, and she's a totem. She was heavily integral to the Spider-Verse event. She was the bride with which the inheritors were after. She should be called Spider-Woman, not Jessica Drew, who has nothing to do with spider continuity. By the way, quick side note, why the hell isn't Black Widow looped in all these spider events? People have constantly made jokes about her being a spider character because her name is Black Widow. She has the same amount of relation with Peter Parker that Jessica Drew does. So it's, it almost, most of the time, it honestly feels like to me, the Marvel editors don't know jack shit about Jessica Drew, which wouldn't surprise me. Not because I think that they're brain dead, just because I think that nobody gives a shit about Spider-Woman except for me. <laughs> okay, so at this point, Jessica Drew 
is no longer called Spider-Woman, and Cindy Moon is called Spider-Woman. She's taken the name in my own little fantasy realm. Honestly, I like the name Silk. She can keep the name Silk. I would, because Silk is such a good name and it sticks to her, I would just give Spider-Woman to Maddie, Fr like, Mad yeah, Maddie Franklin. Let her have the name back. Give her the name. She was called Spider-Woman in the past. She can be called it now. Done. I think she's dead right now or something, but I don't know. I don't know the current status of Maddie Franklin. What are we gonna call Jessica Drew? Well, folks, call her Arachne. Why Arachne? Where's that come from? Well, first of all, it's just a way better name than Spider-Woman. It just sounds way cooler, and it separates her enough from the spider, from that spider hyphen pre preface in the same way that Black Widow does. Like, everyone knows that Black Widow isn't a spider character. Trained in the Red Room, has no relation to Peter Parker or Spider-Man, understood that that's Black Widow. If you change Jessica Drew's superhero name to Arachne, n no one would assume anymore that she has any relation to Spider-Man. They'd be like, oh cool, who's Arachne? Maybe if they thought about it a little more, they'd be like, maybe she has some relation to Peter Parker, but Black Widow doesn't, so maybe this girl doesn't either. Also, fun in continuity reason for her being called Arachne, in Spider-Woman Origin, I don't think this is the case in the original origin from the 80s, in Bendis' retcon of her origin, her original Hydra code name that she was given before she went out to assassinate Nick Fury, or to try to assassinate Nick Fury, the code name she was given was Arachne. That's what she went by. She went by Arachne. Hydra told her, hey, your name's Arachne. This is your code name. Go do a thing. And she tried to do a thing, but Nick Fury didn't let her. So yeah, there, there is already cemented continuity reasoning for it. And the only other problem with this, the only problem with her having the name Arachne is, uh, besides like making up a story reason for her adopting a new name, which I'll get to, is Julia Carpenter, who I mentioned earlier, the second Spider-Woman, she for a while went by the name Arachne, because I think that's initially what she wanted to be called. I'm not sure why she chose Spider-Woman over Arachne, or, you know, went back to it initially. I don't know much about Julia Carpenter, um, but that's sort of a moot point, because right now she's Madam Web. When Charlotte Witter died, right before she died, she transferred her powers over to Julia Carpenter, who I think was Arachne, Spider-Woman at the time. She became Madam Web, started dressing like Madam Web, Madam Web, and just became Madam Web. And she's Madam Web now. So, it doesn't even matter. The only other character in Marvel called Arachne was Julia Carpenter. And she's not called that right now, so right for the taking is the name Arachne. Just give it to Jessica Drew. It would be great. I'd love it. And then Marvel editors could stop being like, hmm, let's get all the spider characters together for an event and throw them all at the wall. I'm honestly surprised that they keep remembering Silk. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's obviously because Dan Slott created the character. I would be interested in like, 20 years if they do another Spider-Verse type event where they get all the spider characters together if they- and Dan Slott's not writing it if they got Silk on- on there because they'd be like oh we just have to- we just have to go on marvel.wikia.com and look at all the spider hyphen characters and we'll just throw all them in there I'm honestly so surprised that Dan Slott is letting Spider-Woman get in the first time I feel like it was just because they wanted to give Spider-Woman a new series which is mind-boggling to me but if that is the case then yeah sure Write Spider-Woman into Spider-Verse. That's fine. Maybe give her a more cemented reason for being there. Like, maybe Peter calls her up uh, because he wants help from uh, their time on the new Avengers. He's like, hey, I know you might be busy with some Avengers business, but we grew pretty close during our time together on the new Avengers. Do you want to come help me out with these energy vampire boys who want to suck the life out of my friend? Um, that'd be fun. Do that. Or don't, because they didn't. So, Marvel, if you're listening, which you're not, and you do want to call Jessica Drew Arachne, and you want to get even more lazy and not come up with your own story reason, I've got one for you. You sort of missed the boat, but I'll come up with another one in a second. Spider-Woman issue 5 by Dennis Hopeless, which was the first issue that was not a Spider-Verse tie-in, saw Jessica Drew donning a new costume, becoming a PI, we talked about this earlier. That would have been the perfect time for her to rebrand herself as Arachne. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, and hindsight's 2020, all that, it's in the past, doesn't matter. However, you have a beautifully perfect opportunity to do this shit again, which I know you're not, because Spider-Force exists, but after Spider-Geddon, when she's dealing with more energy vampires, she's dealing with the shit that she said she no longer wanted to deal with at the end of Spider-Verse, just 
give her the same speech again, where she's like, hey, I'm done. I have a baby. I want to reinvent myself again. Maybe redo her costume once more, sort of take the old, take the new, mesh them together, give her a fancy new sort of updated version of her current costume, then just call her Arachne. Just move her back to LA, that'd be great. She has a long history of being in LA. In LA. Don't put her in England because in England, she'll definitely get forgot about in England. Um, move her back to LA, hook her back up with, with some people over there. Maybe she starts uh, West Coast Avengers, that'd be great. I, I know there's a West Coast Avengers book coming out that she's not a part of, but That'd be fun. Maybe she starts a more legit version of it. I don't know. Do that. That'd be great. I know it's not going to happen because she's clear. They're clearly just moving her in the direction of another spider character on the spider force or whatever the hell that's going to be. And yes, the fan in me is excited ju purely just to see her written again and to actually see her exist in the Marvel universe because she hasn't in so long. But a much bigger part of me is like, I don't want to see the character that I love not done justice because it's almost like if you like Captain America and someday Captain America just starts showing up in you know like Captain Britain comics and you're like wait why because they both have captain in their name what the f why that's that's my pain <laughs> in summary Give the title of Spider-Woman to Maddie Franklin and give the title of Arachne to Jessica Drew and move her away from New York. That's all I want. Give her a new book. Call up Matt Fraction. Say, hey, Matt Fraction, want to write a Spider-Woman book? I would, I would die. That'd be great. Also, I'm real excited to see if they retcon her baby because I don't see her baby anywhere. <laughs> uh... And I have a strong feeling that they're going to forget everything in Dennis Hopeless's run. Just give me a book starring Spider-Woman and Porcupine about their relationship and her baby and her being a P.I. Maybe pal it around with Widow and Carol and other... Alright, that's it. I'm gonna stop yelling about Spider-Woman. If you didn't catch on, by the way, I don't know if I ever explicitly mentioned this, Jessica Drew is my favorite superhero, so if bias matters in this sort of discussion. Honestly, this is just annoying from a continuity perspective. So I hope you objectively can understand now why this bothers me. Um, I know it's not gonna bother someone who doesn't care about Spider-Woman, which is the majority of you, and I get that, but try, try to understand where I'm coming from. Step into my shoes as someone who cares a lot about an obscure character. Like, especially seeing an obscure character done wrong you just know that, like, every every little morsel of a character that, that a company forgets about, like Spider-Woman, is important. Every little shred that we get when she doesn't have a book is important. So when that's done in a way that is a disservice to her character, which I do think is happening here, it's it's annoying, and, and it bothers me. And, and I hope you understand that and don't just see this as bitching. Anyway, thanks, gang. Buy some Spider-Woman comics. They're great. You won't be disappointed.